Hey guys, this is going to be part 2 of the tips and tricks video that I sent out earlier. Um, part 1, I'll attach the link below. It was uh, just about the rigs that I use for the jetty and the kayak. This video is not going to be so much for the kayak, but it's more for the for the jetty. And um, I guess how far I cast out and why I cast out the, to that distance. And also just, uh, just the simple ideas to keep in mind when you're looking for these holes let's just say you've never been to an inlet and you just have nowhere to start you see people scatter around everywhere but generally speaking you'll kind of see where people are kind of huddled around and because those people will probably know you know where all the little holes are and they have those little special spots um that they like to fish but um a lot of them had put into put in the time to kind of find those holes so i am going to say that there are specific sweet spots or honey holes but is you're not limited to only those holes who when 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 it comes to coming to catching these fish so um i'll just kind of show you how what kind of steps i follow um to see if i'm in in a spot that might produce or might not so um hopefully this helps you guys out um and just uh once again if you have any questions you guys could comment below and i'll try to put in some more explanations or maybe even more videos of um of how i go about looking for these places so yeah um we'll, we'll just get right into it now this is the first spot where i actually ended up catching that first keeper um uh, if you watched my previous video and you'll notice that i'm really not bumping uh, or casting out that far i'm just kind of bumping out right in front of me um mainly because with the with the current here with this being so fast you don't really have to cast out too far to find some decent holes so um it previously you'll probably just tell you saw me this holding my holding my uh hand on the bale um just trying to keep tension on the line I, it was really windy that day so i didn't really want the the line to be flying off my reel uh, more than it really uh needed to and uh right there you kind of saw me open up the bale again it's because uh as i shifted the line over um uh, it actually ended up dropping a little more so i've actually found another level to that hole so yeah when you when you feel the the pressure on your line with like, like almost as if the line wants to go a little deeper just open up the bale and uh let it go because uh the, the deeper you get the better it is so and now i just moved it over again and you just kind of saw me once again a lot of line went off the reel even though i'm really not casting out again so so this is actually a pretty nice hole that i found here and i really advise like if you find a good hole and you're not getting a good bite what i usually do is if i have a second rod i'll just kind of leave this rod there for a minute or two just just because especially the with the water being as murky as it is here um, I like to just keep it there for a little bit longer, um, but generally speaking, if the water is pretty clear and you don't feel a bite at all um, in a matter of 30, 40 seconds, to be honest, usually they're not home, um, so it, so you could actually pick up and move on and just check back that at the hole later on, but uh, yeah, you kind of saw it here where I just kind of left it there sitting for a little bit and then finally they found it and uh, produced a little strut. Now on my feet, you probably see something that's, that's strapped around my feet. Um, that's something called uh, corkers. This is a strap-on cut, not an actual boot. I really advise if you guys plan on walking out on jetties that you do uh, wear something like this. And uh, don't work, trust your regular sneakers because it is pretty slick out there and, and it's really dangerous. So um, you see me here, I'm, I'm casting from behind the rail and that's that will get you enough bites and enough action to um, stay safe as opposed to uh, risking stuff that's just by walking up onto the rocks uh, if you don't have the proper gear and um, and you'll notice here I'm actually doing a different tactic te uh, technique I'm actually casting it out a little bit most casts are gonna range between maybe 15 to 20 feet off the rocks that little edge right there um, what there is is here is that uh, when you go out that far you actually have a it goes a gradual to a, a steep drop off where the inlet the currents really fast um, and it's actually like a rock wall so all you really need to do is just right get it to the wall and just find a spot there and then you see it again here where I'm casting it out just a little further 
Um, once again, holding the bail so the line's not flying off. Um, I'm just trying to feel the weight and make sure that I um, close that bail as soon as I feel it hit, make first contact with the bottom. And uh, you'll see me kind of bumping it because the current is uh, on the move. And you, you saw that I cast it out right in front of me, but it drifted down a little bit. Uh, so uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm keeping that tension on so it doesn't, uh, or it reduces the likelihood of me getting snagged. Yeah, and then sometimes when you're bumping around, uh, you'll, you'll get that bite, so. And here, I just got another short. Once again, just flicking it out, holding the bill, making sure that it's, it's staying taut. And once I hit the bottom, uh, what I really want like to, what I really uh, suggest is that you um, as soon as it hits you want to kind of bump your rod a little bit you'll see it right here where I'm kind of like reeling and kind of bumping up a little bit and then sometimes you'll actually feel it kind of roll off and you see me open the bail um, but I just continue to bump until I feel like it's actually caught up on the side of a rock and when I pull it up nudge it upward a little bit you, I'll feel a little rub um, but it but it's not really drifting down it's just kind of rubbing on the side of the rock that's when I actually close the bale and just set it down and just leave it there for a little bit um, especially because when, when you're in the current there's more likelihood that you'll see you'll get fish that are kind of drifting by and uh, they'll just pick it up on them so yeah pretty much uh, that's just be the the various ways that I do uh, kind of fish the jetties um, there is one other way that you'll see people where they're actually casting out to the middle of the inlet um, but that's going to be only when it's slack tied. The slack tide, well, there's a lot of de debris out in the middle there where the old bridge used to be and everything. So there are some of the large ones that sit on the, that debris in the middle of the inlet. So when it gets slack, the line's not going to drift down as much as what you saw there. So, uh, it'll last about 15 to 30 minutes, but you'll see people actually casting out to the middle of the inlet. Uh, especially right uh, starting from underneath the new bridge to slightly to the right of it where the old bridge used to be um, that is where they'll actually cast out and uh, kind of bump around a little bit just trying to catch the larger ones out there um, but you will get snagged so um, it's going to take a lot of gear and a lot of patience to really get um, down to the larger ones so um, that is another tactic but once again, I'm just going to reemphasize the, the safety factor. Make sure that you are aware of where you're walking and what you're doing. Um, don't walk out to the rocks if you... Uh, you really shouldn't walk out to the rocks and just stay behind the rails if you aren't wearing the corker. So um, that is something that I am going to say. So, um, But yeah, uh, here's a list of different various items um, that I use um, and what I recommend. It's not a must-do, but... Yeah, you guys could kind of pick at it and just take it as you will. All right, thank you.